An important feature of the dot product is our ability to get information about the angle between the vectors. And so here's the formula, the geometric formula, again. Uh, length of A times length of B times cosine of the angle between them. That is our A dot B. And if we take this, we could actually solve for cosine of theta. So the cosine of theta is length of A, uh, A dot B over length of A, length of B. So from this, we can now explicitly calculate the right-hand side if we know the two vectors and figure out what the angle between those two vectors ought to be. Uh, but there's actually a little bit better that we can do with this, because if you notice, the denominator is always positive. I'll write that down. Denominator is positive. And the sine of cosine degrees, sine S-I-G-N, the plus or minus value, whether it's positive or negative, the sine of cosine depends on the angle. <clears throat> and so this tells us, uh, so let's finish this part first. So the cosine of theta is positive when the angle, I'm going to use degrees, is between 0 and 90 degrees. It's equal to 0 when the angle is exactly 90 degrees, and it's negative when the angle is between 90 and 180 degrees. <clears throat> and since this is the case, that means over here the dot product will take a sign depending on this angle because the denominator will always be positive, so the sign of a dot b will always match the cosine of theta. So what this means is that if a dot b is greater than zero, then we have an acute angle. If a dot b is equal to zero, then we have a right angle. And if a dot b is less than zero, then we have an obtuse angle. And so being able to calculate the dot product quickly will let you know sort of the geometric relationship between these two vectors. Example, calculate the angle between the vectors 6, 4 and negative 2, 3. So before we actually calculate this, let's do a quick sketch of the diagram just so we can get a sense of this. So negative 2, 3, so negative 2, 3 is up here somewhere. And then 6, 4 is over here somewhere. Okay. So it's hard to tell from the picture. Um, it looks like it might be close to 90 degrees. We can't quite tell from the picture. Um, but this will at least give us some intuition. If these were both in the first quadrant, we would know that we're expecting a positive value because it's an acute angle. Here in this case, um, we just can't tell. And so we're going to do the calculation. So. The cosine of the angle between the vectors is going to be the dot product. I'm just going to write the general formula. The dot product divided by the length of A times the length of B. So in this case, cosine of theta is equal to, well, A dot B is going to be, we'll call, um, call that one A, call that one B. So 6, 4, dot, negative 2, 3, over the length of A, so what's the length of a squared of 6 squared plus 4 squared times the length of b squared of negative 2 squared plus 3 squared. All right, when we do the calculation on the top, we get 6 times negative 2 plus 4 times 3 over the square root of, let's see, 36 and 16 is square root of 52. Square root of 4 plus 9 is 13. And well, as it turns out, it doesn't matter because on top we get negative 12 plus 12. That's going to give us zero. Uh, I'm just going to work this out just because we can. Uh, square root of 52, you can factor out of 4. 4 times 13, and so square root of 4 is 2. So 2 root 13 times root 13, which is going to be 0 over 26, which is, of course, 0. Okay, so cosine of the angle between them is equal to 0. What does that mean? Well, we have to solve the equation. 
cosine theta is equal to zero. And we only want the angle between zero and 180 degrees. Um, so from this, we can conclude that theta is equal to 90 degrees. That's where the cosine value is equal to zero on that interval. Now we have a term for this. If the angle between two vectors is 90 degrees, then we call them orthogonal vectors. Whoops. Orthogonal. So orthogonal vectors, vectors that form a 90 degree angle between them. And if you go on and take some courses in linear algebra, you'll find that orthogonal vectors are extremely useful and extremely important in many situations. Uh, there's also a generalization of this where uh, we have the same type of idea, except that um, we have a less geometric picture over here. Uh, but that's not for this course. So for now, just think orthogonal vectors mean that they form right angles between them. The next topic we're going to talk about are vector projections. Now we've actually already done a form of vector projections when we've been uh, when we were doing decompositions of vectors into their components. Uh, but we can do this more generally. The decomposition into components really went with the uh, the the i vector and the j vector, whereas projections can happen uh, between any two vectors at all. And so I want to talk about the process of doing a projection because the geometry of it is the part where students get the most confused. So we're going to find the projection of u onto v. Now, very important, u onto v. v is the thing we're projecting onto. <coughs> and what this is finding, this is sort of the amount of vector u that points in the direction of the vector v. So I'm going to talk through the steps to find the vector projection geometrically uh, before we try to build some intuition about it. So let's say we have a vector u. I'm going to draw a vector u going like this. And let me use a different color for the vector v. So the vector v and vector u. So we want to find the projection of u onto v. In other words, how much of this vector is actually pointing in the direction of v? And so uh, step one is to just sort of draw the vectors. So uh, step one. Specifically, we're going to draw the vectors so that their tails are together. Step two is to extend v. Now, what do we mean by that? The way we have it set up here, v looks like this. And what we want to do is we want to extend this so that we can see the whole line that it forms. Now, in some cases, this is really important because it will help us make our, uh, our projection work so that we project onto not necessarily the vector v, but its extension. Step three. Draw the perpendicular from the tip of u to v, or at least the extension of u. So once again, here's u, and here's v. <coughs> There's the extension. And basically, we want to start from the tip of u and draw a line down that connects the v so that it's perpendicular 2v. So so this right here. So this must be perpendicular to v. And either v or the extension of v. Step four, identify the projection. So rather than redrawing this here, I'm going to actually draw it on the previous picture. What is the projection? So the projection of u onto v is the part of the vector that starts from the endpoint of V and points until you get to that spot where it's perpendicular. So that right there is the projection of the vector U onto the uh, vector V. 
Now, very important here, this projection vector, this is a vector. If we want just the length of the vector, then that's what actually called the component of you uh, the component of the vector of the well of the projection vector. So the length of the projection vector um, we would write as comp of u onto v, and this is the length of l e n g t h length of the projection. So this is the geometric interpretation of this. Now, it's, it's several steps to think about, and it does take a little bit of time to sink in. But if you just um, go step by step by step, draw the vectors, extend V, find the perpendicular, and then identify the vector, uh, that should, that, those steps should make sense um, as, you, as, you tr as you try drawing these out. Uh, some students find it helpful to rotate the picture so that the vector they're projecting onto is horizontal. Um, that's just a visual cue to help them because uh, otherwise students are sometimes, they, they sometimes don't draw the vector in a way that's perpendicular uh, just because they're not used to seeing the angles in, in different ways. Um, but other than that, this is, this is the process. Now, of course, there is a formula for these things, and so I do want to write down the formula. So the projection of u onto v is equal to u dot v, whoops, over the length of v squared times the vector v. And its length is just u dot v over length of v. And again, also important, this is the projection of u onto v. If we turned this around and did the projection of v onto u, we would get a different picture and we would get a different result. Example, find the projection of the vector 3, negative 2 onto the vector 8, 6. Okay, so just to emphasize the point again, I'm going to go ahead and draw this out one more time. So the vector 3, 2, let's see. 3, sorry, 3, negative 2 is going to be down here. The vector 8, 6 is going to be, 8, 6 is going to be something like this. Let's do this one blue. So 8, 6 is going to be something out here. And we're just going to walk through the geometric steps of creating this projection. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, well, we're going to draw the two vectors so that their uh, tails are together. Then we're going to draw the extension of the vector v, the vector we're projecting onto. And now we're going to draw the perpendicular line from the tip of the, the first vector and draw it so that it's perpendicular to that line we just drew. Now I'm going to rotate the picture so that it's horizontal. Again, this is just much easier for people to see the, the, the perpendicular line this way. If you try to draw it this way, students tend to draw, draw vertically up and down on the page. And so it's really good to make that part horizontal just for the uh, help visualize. And then lastly, we're going to identify the projection vector, which is the vector starting from the same endpoint as the other vectors going up to where that point of intersection is. So that is what this looks like graphically. The calculation that we have to do is going to be the projection of u onto v, which is u dot v over length of v squared times the vector v. All right, so let's try this out. So u is the vector 3, negative 2, dot 8, 6, which is v, divided by the length of v squared. So it's going to be 8 squared plus 6 squared. Well, the square root of this, but then we're going to square it so that'll cancel out. Multiplied by the vector v, which is 8, comma, 6. Okay, so the fraction here, we have 24 minus 12, which is 12 over uh, 64 plus 36, which is 100, times 8, comma, 6. Uh, let's go ahead and reduce first. Uh, we can reduce by factor of 2 here. Let's see, and then, well, we can do factor of 4 there. So 3 over 25, 8, comma, 6, which when we multiply it out is 24, comma, 25, or 24 over 25, comma, 
18 over 25. And this is this vector right here. And it's hard to really tell when we, when we draw this out by hand, but if we were to do this more carefully, we would actually discover that this vector is pointing in, well, first of all, we can see it's pointing in the right direction. So this is pointing up and right, which this one is. But if we were to actually do this very carefully, we could estimate about how far this is and discover that in fact, this is the correct vector. And so this is how we calculate the projection of a vector u onto the vector v. Here it's been done geometrically, and this is the algebraic calculation that's required.